wow. Um, easily, hands down, probably going to be the most entertaining game as basketball fans in this series. Game three, what we, we, we just witnessed. I was doing my notes, collecting everything, going into the fourth quarter, you know, getting myself situated as I normally do. And never did I think that fourth quarter was going to be so big and so chaotic to basically kind of shadow out the first three quarters. This felt like watching two games. Felt like the first three quarters was a game of its own, and then the fourth quarter was a whole different type of separate game of its own. Um, You go into the half, up one, if you're Dallas, 51 to 50. I love the way that they started this game on their home floor. The perfect way to start a game when you're back at home. Game three, back against the wall. You want to come out. You want to send a message. You want to send a message not only to – the opposing team, but to yourself and your fans to get everybody going. And that's exactly what they did. I think they started off this game 9-2. Um, to Luka was going. Kyrie got going with that first basket. Things were just feeling good for them. One of the biggest things for me was the end of that first quarter. And I talked about it on Twitter. Where I was like, I just did, did not like the end of that first quarter. They still won that quarter 31-30. to But if you watch the last couple of possessions, Luka – Took some shots, did a little bit of chirping with the refs, took his time, very nonchalant, getting back on defense, and it allowed the Celtics, after, again, the second shot that he took was like a heave, a three-point heave. It, it gave the Celtics two opportunities to score real quick in transition. Tatum ended up um, getting that dunk at the end of the quarter, and it just kind of took away some of their momentum and some of that that sexiness of the start they had. You know, some of the stuff that got everybody electric. And, the building kind of settled down a little bit. The Mavericks, I mean, the Mavericks kind of was losing their swagger, and then the Celtics were gaining theirs because in that first quarter, Tatum played play really well. Um, he came out 4 of 7 with 13 points. That stood out to me. But you look at the duo on the Dallas Mavericks side, they combined for 22 points. 13 for Luka, 9 for Kyrie, 4 for 7 from the field for Kyrie, 5 of 9 for Luka. Granted, he shot 1 of 5 from 3. The last two threes, again, kind of questionable, but it's Luka Doncic. You live with that. Um, dominated the Celtics in the paint. 20 points in the paint shows you that they missed Porzingis uh, on on Boston side of the basketball because it, you were able to go in there and really get some easy ones. But in that first quarter, I got to tip my hat off to Sam House where he came in and hit two timely threes. He hit three threes in the first quarter, made every single one that he attempted, and I felt like those threes that he hit were good responses for the start that the Dallas Mavericks were having because they were hooping, they came out, and was getting shots in the paint at ease. They didn't get the three-point ball to fall, two of nine, but the fact that they were able to get those 20 points in the paint um, says a lot about the presence of Przingis being missed. But the response for Boston, they are getting the ball up, getting quick shots and knocking them down and taking advantage of of the pass, and Sam Hauser was a big part of that. But you go into the half, up one, slow second quarter for both teams. I think they scored 20 apiece there. Neither team was really getting – getting shots to fall in that second quarter. Yeah, 2 of 7 for Luka, um, 3 of 8 for for Jason Tatum. Brown, Jalen Brown only took two shots in that second quarter. Kyrie went 4 of 7, really the only Maverick that gave you anything there. Both she, both teams um, shot the ball, not their best. I mean, 36% from the field for Boston is not ideal. You got to credit the Dallas Mavericks really, really exposing um, that gap defense a lot and making it tough for guys. And, yeah, 20 points each, 4 for 14 from the three-point line for Boston, 3 of 6 for Dallas. Again, um, getting to that paint, not as not as much as the first quarter, but still enough to give them um, a, a solid quarter. So you go up one. The third quarter, the third quarter is the one that takes the game to a different level. Going to third, you're up one, but somehow, some way, the Dallas Mavericks – run into the juggernaut of the Boston Celtics. And this is why, again, I've said it in every recap video. I've said it on a podcast. I've said it on a linear show. I've said it anytime anybody has asked me anything about this series. There's some intricacies we could talk about. We can definitely have some some deep, nuanced conversations. But the Boston Celtics are just the better team on both sides of the basketball uh, and in a lot of other areas as well. And the third quarter showed why. They outscored them 35-19. to the Dallas Mavericks shot 38% from the field, but more importantly, what stood out to me was they only were able to get up two three-point shots. And the entire quarter, they shot two threes. This is a team who, at the end of this game, in totality, they got up 
25 three-point shots. They only took two in that third quarter. And if, if you look at comparison, the, the Boston Celtics shot 46 three-point shots. It's a very, very big difference in wide margin. And that stood out to me severely. Uh, only got to the free throw line two times, two. Still got to that paint, but the paint was a lot different. A lot different. Whatever conversation Joe Mazzulla and the Boston Celtics had to have, it was definitely about the paint defense and allowing them um, to not dominate them there. The Mavericks scored 12 points in the paint in the third quarter, but on 6 of 17. 6 of 17 shooting in the paint, which again, I can't talk about it enough in the first half, how much they were able to get there and really do what they wanted to do. And it opened up a lot for them because they weren't really making those shots from the perimeter. You go in the half and you look at Dallas. Dallas at the half had 51 points. 30 of those points came in the paint on 15 of 26 shooting. 15 of 26 shooting. They were getting in the paint and handling the business and doing what they wanted to do at will. To go from that to 6 of 17 in a singular quarter is an entirely big difference. And then you also didn't allow them to get the three-point shots off. You were able to defend the paint at this level if you're Boston without also giving up free throws and fouling. So, I mean, this is just a dominant quarter when you talk about the defensive side of the basketball. Then you go over to the offensive side of the basketball, and this is why it makes them so scary, especially as a duo over here with Boston, is you have an entirely different wing who now has decided he want to get his shit together and he want to get going, and Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown in this quarter goes 6-9 and nine from the field. He gets to the free throw line, one of three from the three-point line, 15 points in 12 minutes, played every single minute of this quarter and was flawless, finally had got himself going this entire second half. He hit some timely shots, some tough shots. He definitely had some moments that he made me scratch my head in that fourth quarter and say, Jalen Brown, just look at the third quarter you just had, bro. Why are you doing that? Why are you trying to play this, this hero-style ball? Get to what got you going. Um, and eventually he, he did. But they shot 5 of 11, 65% from the field, and they really turned the game all the way over. Um, they went the entire quarter without a single turnover. This was a dominant performance of a quarter by a team that has showed us the entire season that they are this type of elite. This is the type of quarter they can have. You can do everything you can to keep up. And have a very good half like the Mavericks did. And then like that, they can snap their fingers and flip a switch and just dominate you on both sides of the basketball. Dominate. When you look at this singular quarter, this is domination. 35 to 19 points. And on the other side of the floor, you have a Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving duo that you allow to only score 19 points. They had 14 of the 19. 14 to the 19 points, just, I, I mean, I can't express it enough. You, Przingis is hurt. So all of the dominance they did in the paint without Przingis being there, he still wasn't there in the third quarter. And somehow, Boston got together in that locker room during halftime, and Joe Mazzulla said, hey, this is what we're going to do, and I can't wait to rewatch this game and really dive in on the third quarter and the paint defense. Um, obviously, the overall defense, but the paint defense to have this team shoot Six to 17. Um, I, I just cannot wait to really dive into that and see exactly what was going on and what the difference was. Because, again, I'll, I'll highlight it again. 30 points in the first half. Majority of their points in the first half. 30 of that 51 came in the paint on 15 of 26 shooting. 15 of 26 shooting to then in the very next quarter, the third quarter, it goes six of 17. It's, it's just phenomenal. So that happens. And then, again, we go into the fourth quarter. Um, which was, a, like I said, a game a game on his own of itself. You go in this quarter down 19 points. We enter the quarter 89-70. Dallas uh, falls behind by 21 at one point. And this is where a lot of people on Twitter, a lot of people probably in that arena, felt like, ah, man, here we go. The game is over. Boston got this. That's just the way it was feeling. And then all of a sudden, you see a shot here, a Luka little float shot there. Then he kicks it out to Jalen Green, and then he hits a three. And then before you know it, 10-0 run by, by Dallas. The 10-0 run turns into a 12-0 run. Then you look up again, and it's a 17-2 run. Then you look up again, and it's a 20-2 run. 
And before you know it, they had wiped away the deficit. And during this stretch, some of the notes that I wrote down regarding the Celtics was a lot of careless play. A lot of careless play for them in its main bulk of the quarter that allowed Dallas to creep themselves back into it. Um, I, I just, as good of a quarter as Jalen Brown had in the third, as good of a quarter he ended up having in totality in the fourth, I was not a fan of the turnover he had and some of just the possessions where it just seemed like they got into too much of the stagnant, taking too much time to get into their shit offensive me versus the other team type offensive mindset. Him, Tatum, uh, Drew Holiday had the one, the only shot that he took this quarter was a questionable quick rush shot that I felt like was a great time for them to dial it back, breathe in, breathe out, and get themselves back going, which obviously they eventually did. Um, Drew Holiday had that shot, and then he fouled Kyrie Irving on a three-point shot. Um, Horford gives up the corner three to P.J. Washington, which is some, something they, they were not allowing him to have all series. And then they settled for jump shots. Peyton Pritchard had a couple of the jump shots. Yeah, the two jump shots he took, those were tough shots. Um, Jason Tatum went one of five in this quarter for four points after having a really good start to this game. Obviously ended up with 30 points. But yeah, just a lot of questionable possessions and just it was it was tough to see them have such a dominant quarter and then come back and have a quarter like this with five turnovers and six fouls and just a lot of rushed and missed shots. Seven of 18 at 38 percent. You were just a team that just had 39 points in a quarter. And now you're shooting seven of 18 and just looks like a team that is lost. And on the flip side, you got really great performances from um from some of these bench guys. Derek Lively stepped up big in this quarter. Like I mentioned earlier, Josh Green hit the big three. P.J. Washington gave you nine points. Kyrie Irving had a tough time really scoring a basketball here. Two of six from the field, especially after the controversial decision to call Luka for that foul and uh, foul him out. The only reason I'm saying it's controversial is because it's Luka Doncic. It's in the height of a game. Um, it is the, the the foul that fouls him out. But at the end of the day, like I try to tell fans all the time, you can't it's hard to blame refs when it gets to those type of decisions because you can't sit up there and say that every foul that Luca committed was wrong and bullshit. And when you put yourself in a position to have five fouls at that point of the game, and then you put yourself in a position to be a part of a bang-bang call. That's what comes with it. A bang-bang call means it can go either way. It's exactly what it means. It can go either way. And even after challenging the call, they still felt like it was a foul. And when you pick up these, some of these ticky-tack fouls or some of these fouls that are unnecessary, like we talked about so much with Carlton Towns in the last series, this is the position you put yourself to potentially be in. And now... Everybody want to blame the ref. Everybody want to say what the call was, what the call was not. That's the call. Yeah, but he's going to be. That is the position you put yourself into. And you, when you're Luka, you just can't do that, especially knowing that you have five fouls. You, sometimes it's just not worth it. Hell, at that point, I may consider just letting Jalen Brown have a layup. You've been doing it. Uh, you've been doing that, uh, you know, a lot, a lot this series where you've been letting guys just go right past you. It, when you have five fouls, there's no – you might as well just keep doing that. There's no need to try to turn into Drew Holiday on the defensive side of the basketball all of a sudden with five fouls. You just have to be much more smarter than that. The team needs his presence too much. And if it just felt like those last four and a half or four minutes plus without Luka, it was very predictable what the offensive scheme was going to be for the Mavericks, which was give Kyrie the ball and hope that he can continue to make some magic happen. And it was a too much of a load for him to carry at that point with so much predictability being in their offense. And they kind of just hit that wall. Luca picked up three fouls in his fourth quarter, y'all. He came into the, the fourth quarter with three fouls. He ended with six. It's three fouls. One of them was a charge. He had another foul. And then he had the, uh, the other foul. That, that was the sixth one. The bang, bang one. Just fouls that, you know, add up and put you in a position to where you – you, you unfortunately get fouled out. Um, yeah, that was that was probably the biggest thing in this game and the most unfortunate part because this was a must win for them. Um, 
they came out and I feel like they they upped the intensity on the defensive part of 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 the of the court and um they tried. They gave them everything that they had. You had the game that you've been wanting. A lot of people have been saying, "Man, I feel like Kyrie going to have that game." And when he do, you know, Kyrie he had the game. Kyrie gives you 35 on 13 and 28 shooting, 4 of 6 from 3. He hadn't hit a three-point shot this series um before this game. Luka 11 and 27, a tough night from 3, 1 of 7. Um, but you know, his presence and what he does allows the game to be, you know, um, opened up so much for everybody else that they can feed off of it. And, um, yeah, man, Kyrie also gave you 45 and this was the, this was the, the, the toughest thing to ignore was the fact that you can have Kyrie give you the 35. You can have Luca have 30 point triple doubles. You can have the Celtics struggle from three, um, and one of the games that they did in game two. You can have Chris Stapps Porzingis be hurt, unfortunately, because nobody nobody wants to see that. And you can still lose because at the end of the day, the Boston Celtics, and I feel like a broken record, the Boston Celtics are better. They're better. You did a much better job at the free throw line, Matt, that Dallas. You only went 14 to six, you went 14 to 16. In other games, we've seen you leave six points or so at the free throw line. You didn't this game. You won the free throw battle. You out-rebounded them. You won the turnover battle. Um, they had, what, 12 bench points for the, for the uh, Celtics. You had 16 for the Dallas Map. You beat them in the bench points. You outscored them in the paint by a wide margin, 52 points in the paint to 36. You had more second chance points, 14 to 6. You tied and broke even on fast break points. I mean... Yeah, they fouled more than you. They had 19 fouls compared to your 17. The only thing they did better than y'all significantly was shoot the three ball. That's it. And they missed one fewer free throw. Y'all missed two. They missed one. They made 17 threes because they shot 46. Y'all only made nine because y'all only took 25. And this goes back to the numbers game. Um, We talked about that a little bit on the podcast, but Joe Mazzula saying he emphasized in the numbers game. Y'all took 86 shots to their 82. Y'all made 44. They made 46. Because they took four less shots. Y'all both made 38. Like, I, I, I just don't know, man. I don't know. That's been my whole question this entire series. I don't know what. Realistically, I don't know what can what can happen for them. If you haven't, if you don't win this game, you didn't win game two. I definitely not expect you to win game one. What game will you win? Are you going to need a history? Are you got to be like Miami to get a historic night from three? You telling me that Derrick Jones Jr. really got to come out? Him and P.J. Washington got to combine for nine three point three pointers made. You know what I mean? Plus another Kyrie thirty five point performance. You wasn't gonna have Jason Tatum shooting the ball the way he did in those first two games for long. You wasn't gonna have him come out shooting the ball as bad as they did in that second game. No, no way, no way. Drew Holiday. Can't talk about it enough. Winning player. Winning player. He scored buckets. He's a bucket getter, apparently. <laughs> um, he had defensive stops. The left hand kick out under the rim in the fourth to Derek White. Derek White made some defensive plays. Xavier Tillman came in and gave y'all some big minutes and was moving his feet on the perimeter in certain time. I mean, again. The 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 guard the the difference in the role player regard is just is is too lopsided, man. It's too lopsided. It's too lopsided. Their role players is Drew Holiday, Derek White, Al Horford versus Derek Jones Jr., PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford. They're a better team. They've showed it in the series. They showed it all season. They showed it all playoffs. And um, we've never seen a team come back from 3-0. This is it's, it's, it's tough. I know a lot of fans are going to be frustrated with Luka fouling out. They're going to try to make it seem like that was the wrong call or whatever. It's the name of the game, man. It's the name of the game. I appreciate y'all. We maybe got our last basketball game coming up. It's, it's That's the most heartbreaking thing of it all. Um, as a biased basketball fan, I was, I was rooting so hard for them to come back from that 21-point deficit and win this game. I was. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. 
the fact that they would have extended the series, the fact that they would have just won a, a miraculous game. And, you know, like, uh, it's tough. Um, as always, though, I am PB the Plug. This is a PB the Plug channel. Make sure you locked in here. All NBA Finals. Um, we potentially, like I said, got our last game coming soon. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see y'all next game. I'm out. Peace.